Hi kids. Um, so, uh, if you're watching me on my DJ page, uh, DJ Mix Spooky Pants on uh, Facebook, you might have seen um, earlier this evening that I was going to do uh, a uh, top albums that I have purchased uh, this year. Uh, in 2017. Now, due to the way that I buy music, not all of these came out this year. In fact, some of them are rather old. Uh, and due to the way I purchase music, I am giving priority to everything that I've purchased on vinyl. If you are a musician and you would like me to play your work on my show on WFKU.org, I will uh, include an email address that you can send me MP3s to, and I will also include a P.O. box because I do give priority to anything on vinyl. Unfortunately, my, um, my current portable turntable, which I'm using right now, it was cheap when uh, my ex bought it for me uh, as a Christmas gift. I knew it was fairly inexpensive. I knew it probably wasn't going to last me very long. But he was somehow personally offended that I've had the same cabinet stereo since 1986. Uh, I got it when my eldest half-sister from my, my mom's side uh, married and moved to England, and, you know, she didn't want to convert it over, uh, to their, um, electric. You know, she just figured, might as well just get a new one. So, I got that when she, um, got married and moved away, and I've had the same cabinet stereo since 1986. Uh, the turntable needs a new belt. For some reason, uh, this ex of mine is personally offended that I could keep in a piece of electric of electronic equipment for that long and in mostly working condition. One side of the tape deck doesn't work um, any anymore, <laughs> um, but other than the belt needing uh, the turntable, it needs a new belt, which I might be able to do myself. I might want to uh, look up how to do that. Will this help the uh, glare on me a little bit? A little bit? A little bit. There we go. I might be able to do that myself, I might be able to look that up, uh, the issue is needing the part itself, or there's um, somebody in downtown Ypsilanti uh, at Two Jerks Records who um, does repairs to stereos, and he says he might be willing to take a look at mine and see how easy the repair would be, and, you know, basically, like, you know, give me a bit of a discount. Uh, my friend Jeff at PJ's Used Records also uh, has given me a recommendation. Unfortunately, I wrote it down on my system of scrap paper, and that has vanished into the ether, as they say, or the pit that is my apartment, as I tend to say a lot. So, um, the, uh, the portable turntable I'll be playing the vinyl on. I'll be playing little samples of things that I got uh, this year. And I'm limiting it to things that I bought this year, and this is my top 13. So, um, I will be manually... And you should never do this with your own records. I'm just very unprecious about it, because I've, I've been collecting since I was about 11 or 12. I mean, if you want to count you know, like, little things that I bought myself at tag sales, yard sales, um, you know, when my mother would give me a dollar. Um, I've technically been collecting since I was five, but, like, I haven't been seriously collecting records, like, focusing on, you know, a record collection since I, until I was about, like, 11 or 12. So, um, unlike a lot of collectors, I get very unprecious about things, and... You know, you should never manually adjust the speed. <laughs> it's running far too slow. It's running far too slow. And in theory, um, it's got, you know, it's plugged into adequate power source, but the, um, because it's got a USB connector, 
um, to plug it into the wall to charge it or to run it off your computer's power source. That's not work. Yeah, it's not fitting into the thing anymore. And um, so basically, like, I'm manually adjusting the speed. <laughs> You should never do this. You should never do this. Never, ever, ever. Um, but I'm just doing it for little samples. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know, if a normal person would ruin their records doing this, I hopefully will not be. So, um, in no particular order, um, my top 13, and I've bought a lot more music than this, <laughs> Uh, my top 13, uh, I'm going to start with Patti Smith's Wave. This is, uh, with Patti Smith Group. And I'm, I'm a big old cheeseball debatable poser. Um, as my favorite off of this that I'm going to sample for you would be the, uh, the, the big single from this that everybody knows, which is Dancing Barefoot and... This has been covered by The Mission. It's also been covered, I believe, by Clan of Zymox off of their Phoenix record uh, from 1999, I believe. So this was originally released, and I'm going to fart around with the thing real quick. You can see uh, this says 1979, and... Uh, Patti Smith has been highly influential. Um, she's considered, you know, proto-punk, um, but she's a lot more poetic, so, um, I would put her, like, in the sense of proto-punk being, like, MC5, The Stooges, uh, debatably, uh, Velvet Underground, I would definitely call her proto-goth. She's very poetic, um, and we can see from the, uh, photo on the album cover where a lot of propaganda models you know, <laughs> like, this This looks straight up, like, mid-90s propaganda album cover, you know, before it became, uh, in a quote of one of my friends, Nazi Fetish Boy Toucher magazine. <laughs> I think I've got a couple of those issues. Uh, also, like, I have had, um, Diamond Dogs in various incarnations, but this year... I got a, uh, a re-release, a remaster, on 180-gram virgin vinyl from uh, Barnes & Noble when they did that, and um, I've been slowly replaced, like, I've never had much Bowie on vinyl, it's mostly been uh, uh, first tapes, then CDs. Uh, when I was first getting into Bowie, you could not find him on vinyl. Oh, this might be speeding up. My favorite from here would be We Are the Dead. And the thing is unbalanced. <laughs> Yay! Uh, will I continue sampling? I don't know. Let me see if I can find... You know, I do have a dime in my thing. So, obviously, David Bowie, very influential on everybody since he... Um, since at least Ziggy Stardust. Um, 
He's been influential on punk music. He's been influential on goth music, obviously glam rock. Uh, and, uh, you know, let me... I've got... Again, things you should never do if you're a serious collector, especially if you're starting to collect, but I am going to... Yeah, that should... Wait it. But this is just a temporary fix, and I'm not playing all of my albums this way. Amongst the other reissues that I purchased this year, we've got my favorite uh, from Christian Death, which is obviously with Roz. Uh, this would be Ashes. Ashes is my favorite from this album. And there was a re-release of these... Does this tell me the year these were reissued? Okay, released. 85. Oh, okay, so this was re-released on Season of Mist a couple of years ago. It says 2015 in Roman numerals on the back. But I picked it up this year. It's gray vinyl and... Okay, this is the... A side, and the A side has. Oh wait, no, I want the B side. I had it on CD for. So the, this was my first CD uh, from Dutch East India Company release. My brother-in-law gave it to me. It was like one of his old CDs of it. And are we going to play? I will know this if it's... Oh! We might be starting to speed up a little bit to replace the... No, we're not. Okay, I'm, I'm no longer sampling. Um, I'm no longer sampling on the turntable. This is... I, I need to just break down and have the belt replaced or tightened on my uh, cabinet stereo. I've had it 31 years this last summer. Oh wait, no, I've had it since 87, so I've had 30 years this last August. Yeah, this is... Hold on, I'm gonna take a looky-loo in the back. Okay, I am not playing this uh, portable turntable at all ever again. The, uh, the, the, ooh, this, it, this has gotten very, very hot. It, that should never happen. This is, this is garbage. This is garbage. My, my ex got me a garbage turntable, but he's my ex for a reason, I suppose, right? Another re-release, and this was a Cleopatra re-release. I'm actually surprised that it's as nice as it was, as it is, because, um, well, Cleopatra is known for being prolific in their releases. They're not exactly known for doing really nice releases, but Shadow Project and Christian Death, this would be my favorite favorite Shadow Project album, so to have it on vinyl for the first time, um, and this was their self-titled debut, my favorite from this would be Death Plays His Role, which had uh, Eva O oh on lead vocals, and she is on YouTube, and occasionally she goes... For a while, she was occasionally going live on YouTube, or at least the one time. I don't know how well she's doing that. Um, but you should go watch her on YouTube, and I'll put a link in the description below, so you can go subscribe to Eva O oh on YouTube. Uh, another um, one that I picked up this year, and it came out last year, but um, that was Leonard Cohen's final. Um, obviously, Leonard Cohen highly, and this apparently was a Barnes & Noble exclusive on vinyl. Uh, they should still be having it at the Barnes & Noble stores. 
Um, so, um, obviously, Leonard Cohen, highly, highly influential on gothic music. Um, the Sisters of Mercy, you know, notably got their name from a Leonard Cohen song. Um, uh, he's been uh, influential on gothic music of various types, especially dark wave and neo folk music. Um, before neo folk went to the Nazis, and now you've got people saying, "Oh, that's Nazi." I'm like, "No, not really, not really. It's just been overrun because people who care about it, you know, have sort of let that happen." Another one that I I've had this. I've had this album in various incarnations for many, many years. In fact, I've put together a YouTube playlist of, you know, before I was goth, uh, of music that I loved between the ages of about 10 and 13. And I should put something from Stevie Nicks on there, because I was very much into Stevie Nicks when I was about 11 um, and 12, uh, though I'd still say Annie Lennox was my favorite singer when I was about 11 and 12. So, my favorite from my favorite from this one, I'm gonna be a cheese bowl, and I'm gonna say Edge of Seventeen. Um, as you can see from how she's dressed, uh, Stevie Nicks uh, has um, sort of danced around uh, whether or not she practices witchcraft in interviews. Though uh, she's she's been noted to have a crescent moon um, necklace in you know, recent years. Um, some people say that she's worn pentacles before, but I've never personally seen it. Um, she's very influential on many genre of music. Uh, another one that I bought this year, though it's been around for e since 89, um, this was the first time I got this on vinyl, which was uh, uh, Zymox rather than Clan of... Twist of Shadows. My favorite on this would have to be, I'd say, A Million Things. Um, again, I would play a sample from it, but, um, oh yeah, this is only just now starting to cool off, so my portable turntable is trash, and I need to get my, um, my cabinet fixed. And, um, I also picked up this year uh, the same record trip I picked up the Zymox was This Mortal Coils, It'll End in Tears, and my favorite off this would be Song to the Siren. Uh, now I can play some samples of things I got off of Bandcamp this year, like with my, um, like with my vinyl Many of these came out before this year. This is Addery Squash, You're a Wanker, from their album Citation Needed, which was originally released in 2010. I, Addery Squash is best known for that Devo was right about everything single. Um, I would call them, you know, sort of an artistic heir to Devo. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely call them um, an artistic heir to Devo. Okay, I've got my laptop sort of behaving right now, but it looks like I'm going to have to get an external mouse for it uh, if I want to actually use it in a reasonable way. Uh, so, something I was talking about on the goth tag uh, would be the Swine Lakes. Uh, apparently that was plural. And really, we're doing this today? Take three for these swine legs. I've talked about them on my goth tag as uh, their album is something that I've been listening to a lot. And this was released. Oh, now you're going to. 
Uh, this was released in 2014, but uh, I am one of four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I'm one of nine people logged as, you know, on their public thing as supporting. So I really think they should get a lot more attention. Oh. Are we going to play? If you've listened to my soundtrack that I did um, for On Shannon de Lou, you know, I hear a lot of similarities to uh, this, the, uh, the first track from their album, to a lot of the music I do. Um, they use a lot of, you know, more. Um, first track that we're listening to a sample of is called The Eternity. Uh, they use um, guitar, bass guitar, um, mountain dulcimer, psaltery, violin, uh, <laughs> um, male and female vocals. I'm very much in love with this album. And this is one um, that my longtime internet friend Miranda recommended to me. This is Soror Dolorosa, and this would be uh, their, from their album Blind Scenes, which is so far the only one of theirs that I've bought, but this was released in 2011. I would say my favorite from this is uh, Scars of Crusade. Okay, we're queuing up. Um, they sound, if you like, you know, a classic goth rock sound, uh, this is definitely that. This is definitely, um, you know, they've definitely honed on to the gothic rock, um, sounds like Sisters of Mercy, but not formula, but they manage to keep it fresh, I think. Um, and really, we're not going to play... Come on. Alright. Might be the Wi-Fi on here in here. So I think they managed to keep Seriously? You're doing this to me today. Alright. Well I think they managed to keep the sound very fresh and highly recommend anything of theirs. Uh their other two uh albums they've got out right now on Bandcamp are on my Bandcamp wish list, so um you can go follow uh, my fan collection on Bandcamp and probably find them in my wish list. Get one for yourself. Hopefully, get one for me. That would be nice. Or ah, uh, back again, back again. So I think I left off. Yeah, I should have left off at Soror Dolorosa. Uh, you, I, uh, for all the bands, I'm going to uh, be um, whose music I bought this year. I'm going to uh, give a link in the description down below, so if you're watching on the app, um, you know, just go scroll, scroll, and click. Uh, if you're watching on your computer, scroll, scroll, and click. Uh, if you're watching on Roku, uh, as I often watch YouTube, but I control it from my phone, so scroll, scroll, click. If you don't control your Roku from your phone, um, go online. Just go on a computer and uh, um, do things there and check the music out. Uh, I've also been really into uh, Lebanon Hanover's Tomb for Two, which came out... Uh, this came out in 2013. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just, I just buy music as I find it, and, um, and I've known about Lebanon Hanover for a while, but are we going to play? Oh, there we go. Uh, Sadness is Rebellion is probably my favorite from the album. Uh, I buy albums rather than single songs because first, 
I'm old and that's the habit I'm in. Uh, second, I'm a DJ, so it's a little bit more economical that way, unless I absolutely only like that one song. And three, uh, there are some songs that I would not have fallen in love with if I didn't have the album rather than the single. So, um, uh, so, you know, if I, and some songs just take me a while to get really into, um, I might think, you know, eh, I'm kind of meh on this, but when I have the album, I have all of the songs, and when I have all of the songs, you know, I can get into the ones when I get into them, you know, even if I only really love, like, one or two songs at first, so that is why I buy albums more than, you know, more often than I'll buy a single. So, um, you know, maybe this time next year I'll be more into other songs from all the various albums and whatnot. Um, but maybe not, and if not, you know, oh well, I gave the band a little bit more money by buying the full album, um, rather than just the single. Oh yeah, I totally need uh, an external mouse for this laptop. I have been very enthusiastic about uh, The Bedroom Witch this year. I discovered her music um, from a band camp, from one of the bloggers for Bandcamp's um, blog. Um, so, Bandcamp.com. Uh, they do a blog. Um, various people write for it. Somebody did um, a blog earlier this year on, on the Bandcamp blog. Uh, they did a post earlier this year about goth albums, but this isn't from that. She's not from there. She, I discovered her from somebody else who, you know, decided to plug just the Bedroom Witch. And I just love her music. I love it. She's, she's quirky and she's very synth pop oriented, but more on the dark wave, you know, gothic and, you know, um, if you care, she... I'm pretty sure she's trans. I think I read that on a, on a bio, either on her Facebook page or on her Bandcamp page. If I'm mistaken and she's not, I don't mean any harm by, by, by saying that. Um, but, um, you know, I'm 98% certain she is trans, um, which is important to some people, um, not, you know, oh well, other people just care if you make good music, but some people, it's bonus points if, you know, that if the musician is also, you know, somebody that they, you know, whose experience they identify with. So, you know, that's very important to various LGBT sorts of people, um, being, uh, trans male myself and also gay, um, I tend to, you know, identify more with, um, with artists who are gay, um, or trans, to a lesser extent trans, because first off, I don't know too many trans male musicians. Uh, secondly, um, the trans women, I'm like, there is a sort of trans experience that overlaps, and, um, and I do love my trans women musicians, uh, um, Anavani of Support Ernest, uh, Yendri, uh, Omwen, um, she's been, she's relatively out, um, but if you didn't know, now you do. Uh, she's known from, you know, various compilations featuring Roz Williams or the Roz Williams tribute album. She did the original music based on his poetry rather than the wholly original song. Um, who else? Oh, Jane County. Jane County, a fucking punk rock pioneer. Uh, good enough to be plagiarized by David Bowie. <laughs> Even, even the musicians who worked on uh, Ziggy Stardust and Aladdin Sane with him, you know, say, no, he straight up plagiarized, you know, uh, this, this riff that Jane County wrote and Bowie turned it into Gene Genie. So, you know, she's good enough to be plagiarized by David Bowie. She's fucking brilliant. Um, uh, I've got an old issue of Ghostly Magazine that featured an interview with Jane County. So, Jane County, you know, like... You know, um, so yeah, The Bedroom Witch, I love her music. I absolutely love her music. She's, 
got a beautiful, full, robust uh, contralto voice. I'd easily compare her voice to Annie Lennox. And Annie Lennox was probably my gateway to, you know, moody music. Uh, one of my gateways to moody music. Um, she's got these lovely, atmospheric, dark wave um, instrumentals backing up her vocals. Uh, and I've been very enthusiastic about her since I discovered her via the Bandcamp community blog earlier this year. She's got she's got several things out. Um, all of the stuff on her um, on her independent Bandcamp um, is name your price. I also bought um, one of the T-shirts she's offering. She has another album that is out. I don't yet have that one because that is. Hello? But yeah, the one that she released in August, I just got that. Um, because things happen, right? Uh, so, Injury, that's her one that was released on a Bandcamp label, and they are practical records. So I don't yet have that one. Uh, that came out in April of this year, so she's she's wonderfully prolific too she's just i i'm in love with her i i i wish i i almost wish she were my girlfriend but it would be you know a very you know a sort of asexual sort of relationship since i'm definitely more into men uh but you know we could we could have some kind of partnership like cole porter and and i've just forgotten her name but i've got the movie about about their marriage de lovely <laughs> So yeah, so it could be a lovely lavender marriage, like oh, like Valentino and Jean Aker. Of course, she'd have to be a lesbian. Do you, is she? A, I don't care. I don't care what her sexuality is. She's wonderful. She's wonderful. The bedroom witch. You have to check her out. So those are my top thirteen um, albums that I bought this year. I sorry I couldn't narrow down a single one from the bedroom witch, but her latest. Uh, my Sacrifices, My Demands, that came out in August of this year. And I think that's the only one I bought uh, that is in my top 13 albums that I personally bought this year that actually came out this year. <laughs> uh, so, uh, after I put this uh, video together and upload it, uh, I will add all the links to the various bands and you should go check them out. Uh, I hope I hope they bring you at least half as much joy as they've all brought me. Thank you so much, and uh, hopefully we will have another um, DJ McSpooky Pants top music sort of post <laughs> soon. All right, um, next vlog I want to do... Oh, I've got the notes for it somewhere. Oh, I think that was the TMI tag. Where'd the other part of it? There's the other part of it. I tried working on it a couple days ago, but um, the video kept timing out on me, so uh, I'm, maybe I'll salvage what's left of that, or maybe I'll just do it all in the same outfit. 